just a few more weeks to get those coffers filled with Halloween candy. Talk to Jerry. We're going to go trick-or-treating this year, so we might just knock on your door. <laughs> Jane couldn't make it. You do not want to call from him. He's one of the best bill collectors in Baltimore. In his seminar, seminars, he says, sometimes I'm a golden retriever, other times an aggressive pit bull. He ends his seminars by saying, remember these three words always. Persistence breaks resistance. Persistence breaks resistance. My, you're awake today. That's very refreshing, yeah. We have two stories about persistence today. The Amalekites were ancient enemies of Israel. They're the first uh, tribe that the Jews met when they crossed over the Jordan. They attacked Israel. Now, as long as Moses prayed, the battle went well. He got tired, but others supported his hands. That's why it's so appropriate to ask others to support us with their prayers. This is especially important when we're under siege, like Moses and his people. The Lord has put power behind prayer. It's a spiritual tool to be used. The father of St. Therese of Lisieux, she, he'd never let any of his five daughters, imagine that, read the newspapers. But one time, little Therese, she snook a look and she read about Pranzini. Pranzini was a horrible criminal who was about to be executed. He was hard, unrepentant. Therese and her sister Celine said, let us pray for his conversion. Moments before he was to die, he kissed the crucifix that the priest offered him three times. He was saved through the prayer of these two trusting, prayerful young girls. Monica, the mother of St. Augustine, prayed for 30 years before he finally saw the light and became a great scholar and a great saint. And there was a lovely woman one day just was so shocked, so shocked. She told her, her priest, I can't believe it. My husband came today and said he wants to become Catholic. I've been praying for that for over 60 years. He was received, and he died shortly afterwards. Persistent prayer broke the resistance of a playboy son, Augustine, a criminal, and a very fine man and husband. The Lord has chosen us to share in his work. Go teach all nations, and don't forget the water for their baptism. We are to be partners with the Lord. And the same goes for the power of prayer. He uses our persistent prayer to fulfill his plans. The Lord could and does often act just on his own accord. However, he likes to engage all of us in his work. And he's loaded prowl power into prayer. But we need to use it and believe in it. One time a priest got called to make a pastoral visit and the house had a real creepy feel about it. There was a man there who had not led a good life. His children were concerned for his soul more than <laughs> he appeared to be. Finally, let the priest come. And after the visit, which was rocky, at best the man died. For a long time, the priest felt called to pray for him. He sensed the Lord wanted prayers for this tough dude who was probably in purgatory doing a lot of rust removal from his soul. Or maybe there's a place where you get to go to kind of sort things out. Who knows? But whatever the case, the priest prayed for him for a very long time. The woman awoke in the middle of the night. She had a very strong sense she was to pray for Ayatollah Khomeini. He's the one who took all those American hostage, hostage in, in the capital there. The next day, she approached her pastor. I have a problem, dreaded words 
of any pastor to hear. I know the Ayatollah is not a good guy. I wonder, why was I awoken to pray for him? Ah, very interesting, my dear. You were the chosen instrument to bring him to his senses, to own his deeds, or at least to get into purgatory where the Lord can have a crack at him. You know, every day we help each other in so many ways. The people were very kind to me, steering me around today. And maybe we help a neighbor with a task, or even get the girl ready to go to college, ready to go to college. It should not surprise us that this type of help extends to the world of the Spirit. We partner with the Lord for the good of ourselves and the good of others. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits, reminds us God is always at work. It doesn't look like it. God is always, always at work. And how does God work often? Through this secondary causality called human beings. God works through us. Another Jesuit, Tejard de Chardin, a great paleontologist, had observed, boy, this earth evolved so slowly. So he said, trust, trust in the slow work of God. How un-American, slow work <laughs> of God. you think the Lord would get, get it right. But this is what Monica and that lovely lady of 60 years of marriage did. You know, sometimes we feel, what's the use? He's got earmuffs on. He ain't listening to me. Not listening to me. Ah, perhaps we can get something, a little wisdom from country music. Thank God for unanswered prayer. Thank God for unanswered prayer. Perhaps what we wanted was not in our best interest or in the interest of the people we love. She was a lovely elderly lady. You would have loved her. She had one daughter, and they were very close, and the older woman was very, very sick. And oh, did they pray. Oh, did they pray for deliverance. She was not getting better. And one day, the woman said to her daughter, well, well, I guess we got our answer. Our answer? You're getting sick, her mom. Well, my dear, the answer was no. No. Of course, we don't like to hear that one. The answer was no. The Lord, and she was a woman of epic faith, the Lord must have other plans for us. And she had, as they say in the words of Scripture, a most peaceful death and a quiet, quiet ending. The Lord answered the prayer, but in a different way. And some answers to prayer we're not going to see here. We'll only see how God was faithful to answering our prayer when we're walking on the shores of eternity. But the persistence of Monica prayer, Monica's prayer broke Augustine's resistance. That woman for 60 years broke her husband's resistance. And even Pranzini had a conversion just before he left earth because of two French girls who believed and trusted in the power of their prayer. Persistence does break resistance. And by the way, it breaks ours. It breaks ours. It does something else. When we are persistent in prayer, we got the pipeline open. We got the river channel cut. And we flow to God, and God can flow to us. And also, more and more, we begin to realize, you know, God, you really are our divine source. Everything I have, every breath, every gift, everything, my faith, it comes from you. And all deliverance somehow always comes from God. Now, Jesus knew, knowing us well, going to be real problems with not seeming to get answers to prayer. So he came out with some pretty blunt words. When the Son of Man comes, will he find any faith? Got to look for it, sounds like it. Will he find any faith? And sometimes in those moments where we cannot make any sense of what is going on, we have to heroically trust and perhaps pray. You know, we can pray for faith. We can't give ourselves faith. It's a gift of the Spirit, but we sure can ask for it. But maybe most of the time we say with the great St. Augustine, 
the sinner turned saint. I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Help thou my unbelief. Winston Churchill was giving a graduation speech. So when he got up, he comes to this little pulpit or whatever it was, and he says in that beautiful English voice, never give up. Never give up. And he sat down. <laughs> we had an hour. What are we going to do? <laughs> but anyway, those students never forgot, never forgot those words. It got planted on their soul. There are good words to live by. We see them in the heroic resistance in Ukraine. Never, never give up. So we ask the Lord, break our resistance to staying constantly in prayer. And also, will you give us belief? It really does work, but it's in God's time, in God's way. He's got the master plan. We just see little teeny snippets sometimes. But so most of the time we walk in obscurity of faith, but we walk. With faith, we can walk through any darkness and know that somehow, someday, the light is going to dawn again. But till then, let us say with dear, the dear lion of England, never give up. Never give up. Yeah, Jerry, they are pretty nice people here. Right? <laughs>